Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly, where it's going and what's going on. So we know that the sentence delay was denied. And so we're moving forward into, you know, getting prepared for the sentencing June 16th, 2022. And I felt this was very important to bring on to the stage to share with you some of the proposed changes to code of conduct for U.S. judges and judicial conduct and disability rules that is going to foster where we're going to see the changes occurring in Robert Sylvester Kelly's case. Now, um, the code of conduct for U.S. judges are coded and it was an effective date March 12, 2019. The rules for judicial conduct and judicial disability proceedings were changed March 12, 2019. So the March 12, 2019 changes responded to the recommendations provided in the June 1, 2018 report of the Federal Judiciary Workplace Conduct Working Group. On September 13, 2018, the Judicial Conference Committee on Codes of Conduct and Judicial Conduct and Disability Release for Public Comment proposed changes to the Code of Conduct for U.S. Judges and the Rules for Disability Proceedings held a public hearing on proposed changes to the Code on October 30, 2018 and received comments on the proposed codes. So the public comments on the Code of Conduct and Judicial Conduct and Disability considered submissions related to the proposed changes to the code. And they had a review comment board that we will discuss um, in a minute. So I definitely want to put out a video because R. R Kelly is dealing with the disability claim and the actions that, you know, with his dyslexia and the fact that he has been, you know, um, a product of his environment, this these changes result in his case. So I want to take a listen to the public hearing, propose the changes and see if anything, you know, stands out to you regarding how R. Kelly should be considered going through this criminal justice proceeding. Here we go. Okay, so the audio is acting up, <laughs> but I'm gonna share with you that the code of conduct for US judges includes the ethical canons that apply to federal judges and provides guidance on their performance of official duties and engagement in a variety of outside activities. And like I said, I was asked the question, can R. Kelly get a new judge during his uh, sentencing phase that relates to being more appropriate? It seems like Judge Donnelly does have a prejudice against him. So um, that was a really good question. So I'm going to introduce you to some canons. We have five canons, and these are laws that are specifically geared towards judges to make sure that they're doing the best that they can do in sentencing and not over sentencing. So canon number one, these are some of the provised changes that the U.S. District Court had made on judges and their discriminatory actions in sentencing and um, deliberations. So Canon number one, a judge should uphold the integrity and independence of the judiciary. Canon number two, a judge should avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety in all activities. We'll, we'll discuss this as we go. Canon three, a judge should perform the duties of the official fairly, impartially, and diligently. Canon four, a judge may engage in extrajudicial activities that are consistent with the obligations of ju judicial office. Canon five, a judge should refrain from all political activity, compliance with the code of conduct, applicable date of compliance. So the code of conduct for the United States judges adopted by the Judicial Conference April 
1973 was known as the Code of Judicial Conduct for United States Judges. And the codes are used for circuit judges, district judges, court of international trade judges, court of federal claims judges, bankruptcy judges, magistrate judges. Certain provisions of this code apply to special masters and commissioners as indicated in the compliance section, the tax court, court of appeals for veterans claims and court of appeals for the armed forces have adapted this code. So the chair committee on codes of conduct is general counsel administrative office of the United States courts, Thurgood Marshall, federal judiciary building, one Columbus circle, Northeast Washington, DC two. 0544 and the contact number is 202-502-1100. Procedural questions may be addressed to the Office of General Counsel, Administrative Office of the United States Courts, Thurgood Marshall um, Building, 1 Columbus Circle Northeast, Washington DC 20544. So let's look at some of these canons. Now, the canons are the rules that the judges must follow. And we're going to take a break and get some of your uh, comments and share some of your thoughts that you have on this information. So let's get started. Canon number one. Now, this canon states that a judge should uphold integrity and independence of the judiciary. So this is an independent and honorable judiciary indispensable to the justice in our society and should maintain and enforce high standards of conduct and should personally observe those standards so that the integrity and independence of the judiciary may be preserved. The provisions of this code should be construed and applied to further that objective. Um, so deference to the judgments and rulings of courts depend on public confidence. We have to be confident in the integrity and independence of the judges. The integrity and independence of the judges depend and turn on acting without fear or favor. Allowing judges should be independent and they must comply with the law and should comply with this code. Code number one, canon one, adherence to this responsibility helps to maintain the public confidence in the impartiality of the judiciary. So basically I'm getting comments about Robert Sylvester Kelly and there, these commenters are telling me that they feel that his rights have been violated solely to the point that, you know, the judge may not be as impartial to the rulings of her sentencing. And this is a very scary thing for many of our uh, supporters here at R. Kelly Appeal TV and the fans and the people who are behind Robert Sylvester Kelly. So it helps to maintain a public confidence. Our people are not feeling confident at this time. Conversely, violation of this code, it diminishes public confidence in the judiciary and injures our system of government under law. So now the canons are rules of reason. They should be applied consistently with the constitutional requirements, statutes, other court rules and decisional law and in the context of all relevant circumstances. So the code is to be construed so it does not in, impinge on the essential independence of judges making judicial decisions. So this is where the appeal process and the higher courts come into play. That's why we have the higher courts. Furthermore, the code is not designated or intended as a basis for civil liability or criminal prosecution. Finally, the code is not intended to be used for tactical advantage. So I needed to bring that canon law number one to you so you can see how the court is supposed to present itself, you know, and um, so a judge should uphold the integrity and independence of the judiciary. And do you feel that Robert Sylvester Kelly is being upheld in integrity and independence apart his judges being, you know, independent and impartial? Number two, canon number two, a judge should avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety in all activities. Respect the law. A judge has to respect and comply with the law and should act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence 
in the integrity and partiality. Now, for her not being able to just give him one instance, knowing that the pandemic was part of his case and knowing that he was unable to really, you know, build his case uh, because of the pandemic, she denies him sentencing delay. For what reason? For what reason? Um, outside influence, a judge should not allow family, social, political, financial, or other relationships to influence judicial conduct or judgment. A judge should neither lend the prestige of the judicial office to advance the private interests of the judge or others, nor convey or permit others to convey the impression that they are in a special position to influence the judge. A judge should not testify voluntarily as a character witness. That's B of Canon two. And I do believe, and I've heard other, you know, commenters state that the Me Too movement is producing a lot of her aggression against Robert Sylvester Kelly. And that is making her emotional to the point where she can't see beyond the man. She cannot see. She see, she sees all men in society has, and, and Robert Sylvester Kelly's face is on all those men, all those men's bodies. You know what I mean? Like as if she has a vendetta against him. C, non-discriminatory membership. A judge should not hold membership in any organization that practices invidious discrimination on the basis of race, sex, religion, or national origin. Canon 2A, an appearance of inappropriate uh, impropriety occurs when reasonable minds with knowledge of all the relevant circumstances disclosed by a reasonable inquiry would conclude that the judge's honesty and integrity and partiality, temperament, or fitness to serve as a judge is impaired. Do you believe that Judge Donnelly's um, judgment is impaired? Public confidence in the judiciary is eroded by irresponsible or improper conduct by judges, including harassment and other inappropriate workplace behavior. A judge must avoid all impropriety and appearances of impropriety um, in a professional area. And they must proceed to be, you know, perceived as an official judge. The witnesses and everyone demands the justice is required. The canon does not create a privilege against testifying in response to an official summons. A judge should avoid lending the prestige of judicial office to advance the private interests of the judge or others. Um, And canon two has three parts, A, B, and C. And if you would like to look those up, um, please do so under canon two, A, B, and C. Canon three, a judge should perform the duties of the office fairly and partially and diligently. The duties of a judicial office takes precedence over all other activities. The judge should perform these duties with respect for others and should not engage in behavior that is harassing, abusive, prejudiced, or biased. The judge should adhere to the following standards. A, a judge should be faithful to and maintain professional competence in the law and should not be swayed by partisan interest, public clamor, or fear of criticism. What are your thoughts there? Number two, a judge should hear and decide matters assigned unless disqualified and should maintain order and doric decorum in all judicial proceedings. Three, A judge should be patient, dignified, respectful, and courteous to litigants, jurors, witnesses, lawyers, and others with whom the judge deals in an official capacity. A judge should require similar conduct by those subject to the judge's control, including lawyers, to the extent consistent with their role in the adversary process. Now, that right there brings up a statement, guilty, uh, not guilty until proven not guilty. Well, guilty until proven innocent. That's what they completely took out, you know, um, the defendant. So this is all prosecutorial. A judge should occur accord to every person who has a legal interest in the proceeding and the person's lawyer, the full right to be heard according to the law, except as set out below, a judge should not initiate, permit, or consider ex parte, communications or 
consider other communications concerning a pending or impending matter that's made outside the presence of the partnership. So you can't bring hearsay into the courtroom and have these people testify on behalf of the defendant and then incarcerate him and keep him incarcerated with no bail, with no opportunity to plead his case. Canon number three, a judge should perform the duties of the office fairly and partially and diligently. Do you think Judge Donnelly is doing that? She is pushing for a higher Supreme Court justice ruling um, to determine what happens in the appeal process. The, the duties of a judicial office takes precedence over all other activities. The judge should perform these duties with respect for others and should not engage in behavior that is harassing, abusive, prejudiced, or biased. The judge should adhere to the following standards. Adjudicative responsibilities. Number one, a judge should be faithful to and maintain professional competence in the law and should not be swayed by interest, public clamor, or fear of criticism. A judge should hear and decide matters assigned unless disqualified and should maintain order and decorum in all the proceedings. Okay. Um, these are things that things that would disqualify a judge shall disqualify himself or herself in a proceeding in which the judge is not able to be fair, reasonable, or question, including but not limited to the instances which the judge has a personal bias or prejudice concerning a party, a personal knowledge of disputed evidentiary facts concerning the proceedings. The judge served as a lawyer in the matter in controversy or a lawyer with whom the judge previously practiced law served during such association as a lawyer concerning the matter or the judge or lawyer has been a material witness. The judge knows that the judge individually or as a fiduciary of the judge's spouse or minor child resides in the household. So these are personal issues of this canon. Um, canon three, so if you would like to look that up, you can definitely do so. Canon four, a judge may engage in extra judicial activities that are consistent with the obligations of the judicial office. So here's what this canon means. A judge may engage in extra judicial activities, including law related pursuance and civil, charitable, educational, religious, social, financial, fiduciary, and governmental activities, and may speak, write, lecture, and teach on both law related and non-legal subjects. However, a judge should not participate in an extrajudicial activity that detracts from the dignity of the judge's office, interferes with the performance of the judge's official duties, reflect adversely on the judgment's impartiality, leading to frequent disqualifications or violations of the limitations set forth below. Speaking, consulting on matters concerning the law, to the extent that it would generally be perceived that the judge's judicial experience provisions um, special expertise when the judge is acting pro se in a matter involving the judge or the judge's interest. This is very important. Uh, the Me Too moment, Me Too movement is an interest. It's an organization. Organizations, a judge may participate and serve as a member, officer, director, trustee, or non-legal advisor of a nonprofit organization devoted to the law, the legal system, the administration of justice, and may assist such an organization in the management and investment of funds. A judge may make recommendations to public and private fund granting agencies about projects and programs concerning the law, the legal system, and the administrative of justice. Um, a judge should not practice law and should not serve as a family member's lawyer in any forum. So these are specifically what's under this canon. So let's move on to canon five. A judge should refrain from political activity. A judge should not act as a leader or hold in any office in a political organization, make speeches for a political organization or candidate or publicly endorse or oppose a candidate for public office, solicit funds for pay, resignate um, 
oh, a judge should resign the judicial office if it becomes a candidate in a primary or general election for any office. Um, so this is just the compliancy of the code of conducts. You know, while acting as a judge, you should not be required to do anything that would special master you to be part of any of these canons, one, two, or three, or four, or five. And the applicable date of compliance, persons to whom this code applies should arrange their financial and fiduciary areas as soon as reasonably possible to comply with it and should do so in an event within one year after appointment. If, however, the demands of the person's time and possibility of conflict of interest are not substantial, such a person may continue to act without compensation as an executor, administrator, trustee, or other fiduciary for the estate of a person. So basically, this is the policy of the Code of Conduct for the United States judges, federal judges, effective March 12, 2019. The ethical standards and the Code of Conduct for you know, these judges are specifically to make sure that the legalities are really able to come together to allow everyone that opportunity. Because in the court of law, according to the criminal justice system, from what I was taught, the person is not guilty until proven otherwise. So to put Robert Sylvester Kelly in this position without looking at his, his, um, disability without looking at the testimonies and how people are retracting their their stories and things are coming up the courts the administrative office of the united states courts should provide the confidence and convenience to be to look at this information and they should not be partial to the me too movement they are allowing the Me Too movement to become an organizational structure that puts someone into a, a life sentence for the reason of the Me Too movement. And this is against the law. This is administratively against the law. So this is why I feel that the appeal process by um, Robert Sylvester Kelly and attorney Bonjean. And I am talking with some attorneys right now to help, you know, me understand what is happening and what is going on, because this is really affecting the emotional state of the United States of America relating to Robert Sylvester Kelly. Some people are feeling like, you know, there is no justice. There is no justice. And when people feel that justice is not prevailing, then everyone suffers. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing to this channel, giving me your comments. I cannot answer everything because I don't know everything. I have to go and do my research and I have to make sure that this research is valid and, um, and then I have to bring it back to you. So please be patient with me. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we're fighting for Robert Sylvester Kelly. We really, really are. And everything that this channel receives as far as compensation, 10% of that is going to go to Robert Sylvester Kelly. So um, please feel free if you would like to cash at me at dollar sign Dorina Shine. That is going to be in the comment box below. You don't have to, but every bit of it matters. And I wish that there was a way that it could go to him to where he could actually use this. Cause I think he is a ward of the state as right now in anything that, um, he receives as far as compensation for commissary or anything like that, that stays with him. And I got to look that up to make sure that that's right, because they may be pulling that money out from him to where he's not even able to eat, you know? So, so yeah, let's, let's just keep him in high provisions in our minds, see him with millions and millions of people around him rooting for him and, and just seeing him in a great light and keeping him terribly confident, <laughs> um, terribly confident so that he will be able to get through this. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. And as always, keep it 100.